Adams do solemnly swear that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter, so help me God. Madam Ambassador, you are now the accredited representative of the United States to the Grand Duchy of Lichtenberg. My congratulations. This is the proudest and happiest moment of my life. I am proud because my duties take me to a country it has long been my dream to know and love, the glorious Grand Duchy of Lichtenberg. Lichtenberg and the United States of America are both conscious of the historic friendship that has existed between our two people. I shall seriously endeavor to preserve that warm relationship, and I shall strive with all my heart and strength to bring about a closer unity between us. Congratulations, Madam Ambassador. How soon do you leave us? Tomorrow morning. And uh, when do you arrive at your post? I'm not sure. Hey, boss, where the heck is Lichtenberg? Step on it. She's on her way down. Hope I got enough lights. <laughs> With Sally's diamonds, you don't need lights. <laughs> hey. This is Adam. Madam Ambassador, would you please hold it? Big smile now. Thank you. How about a statement, Sally? Yeah, tell us about Who it. Who was the gun? Now, one at a time, boys, one at a time. You tee off, Johnny. This way, Mrs. Adams. That's fine. Thank you. Thanks. Mrs. Adams, as our new ambassador to Lichtenberg, is there any statement you'd like to make? Yes, there is. You can say for me, boys, that the farewell party I'm throwing tonight is going to be a killer diller, and you're all invited. End of statement. Oh, no, Mrs. Adams. Yes? Uh, don't you feel that Lichtenberg should be included in some multilateral system to promote exchange stability? He talks cute. <laughs> no, I mean, shouldn't Lichtenberg be brought into the IBRD? You don't have to spell it out. You can say it in front of these fellas. No, seriously, Mrs. Adams. Okay, seriously. I don't know what the I don't know what you're talking about. Well, uh, <laughs> my city editor thought up those questions, not me. But I would like to know how you got this appointment. That one I can answer. I was born on a thousand acres of Oklahoma land. Nothing grew on the thousand acres, for it was gravel and sand. One day, father started digging in a field, hoping to find some soil. He dug and he dug, and what do you think? Oil, oil, oil. The money rolled in, and I rolled out with a fortune pile so high. Washington was my destination, and now, who am I? I'm the chosen party giver for the White House clientele. And they know that I deliver what it takes to make them gel. And in Washington, I'm known by one and all. As the hostess with the mostess on the ball. They would go to Elza Maxwell when they had an ax to grind. They could always grind the racks well at the party she designed. Hatchet grinders all prefer to pause on the hostess with the mostest on the ball. I've a great big bar and good caviar, yes, the best that can be found, and a large amount in my bank account when election time comes round. Entertaining vodka drinkers is a job they give to me. Making nice guys out of stinkers seems to be my of tea, what they really need behind the iron wall, is the hostess with the mooses on the ball. In the handbag that I'll carry, there's a precious little note to their highnesses from Harry, introducing me, he wrote, I'll appreciate a favor large on Sally, yeah? you wouldn't like me to make a little farewell speech tonight, would you? That's right, I wouldn't. I hear you were wonderful in the Senate today, Charlie. Well, I didn't speak today. Everybody loved it. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Deep and Thoughtful. Why aren't you dancing? Nobody asked me. <laughs> You're going to be sorry you said that. Excuse me, Charlie. Surely. Yo, we 
with the Morning Globe, aren't you? Uh, not anymore. I'm going with you to Lichtenberg. With me? As your press attaché. Who hired you? Oh, nobody yet, but you're going to need a press attaché, and I need a job. I got fired this afternoon. Is that a recommendation? In a way, I got fired for writing nice things about your appointment. Yeah? Uh, no, I just made that up to impress you. Actually, the boss and I did have a difference of opinion, but it concerned a matter of eight bucks a week, and, uh, well, I'm available, Mrs. Adams, and I think you'll find me useful. I know quite a lot about European politics. And you think I don't, is that it? Well, I think you're going to learn very fast. Well, thank you, Mr. M Mr. Gibson, Kenneth Gibson. I can be clear by the State Department in the morning and be ready to leave by noon. Uh, no dice, huh? Pardon me, Mrs. Adams. You're wanted on the phone. Whoever it is, tell them to come right over. It's long distance, Mrs. Adams. You'll want this call. Oh, thank you, Burton. Sorry, kid. I don't need a press attaché. Wish I did. Hello? Hello, Harry. How's everything in Independence? Yup, I'm leaving in the morning. What? Oh, sure, the party's going fine. I'm sorry you and Beth couldn't make it. Is Margaret with you? Denver, how did it go? Even in Denver. Well, the critics don't know everything. She made money, didn't she? Good. Harry, I'm afraid I won't get to see you before I leave. Yes, I'm going to take this job very seriously. Thanks, Harry, for everything. Love to the family. Bye, Harry. We're all ready for the newsreel shots, Mrs. Adams. We're set up in the den. Just a short talk. It won't take a minute. Talk? What'll I say? Oh, you know. What you intend to do when you get over there? A few facts about Lichtenberg, anything. Lichtenberg? What do I know oh, about it? Mrs. Adams, excuse me. Sure. Uh, those uh, notes you dictated? Notes? Mm -hmm. I think it's about what you need. Oh, 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 oh thanks, kid. Uh, Kenneth here, uh, Mr. Gibson is my press attaché. He's going with me to Lichtenberg. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's get it over with. Now, uh, Mrs. Adams, if you'll just step over here, please. You boys all set up? And though, as a diplomatic pope, Lichtenberg's importance cannot be overestimated, the country is no bigger than... Brooklyn? While Sally's celebrated friends congratulate and wish her Godspeed, they may recall the days when the fabulous Oklahoma widow, new in Washington, made her still widely quoted remark. A remark that was to endear her in the hearts of the nation's capital. I'll take the check. <laughs> but in the years to follow, it was her simple, forthright charm, native common sense, that made her Washington's number one hostess and brought to her home leaders of society, leaders of the nation's government. Quiet, everybody! Quiet! <laughs> columns in the Lichtenberg City Sun, and two in the Colin Hoffman Express. That's not bad, huh? Seven hours late. What have you to say to that? Well, I tried to get her to fly over with me. You and your female ambassador. Sir? Yes? We finally have a report on Mrs. Adams. Well? She was in Switzerland last night. Switzerland? And this morning at 8 o'clock, she tried to cross the border into Italy. She insisted it was Lichtenberg. Well, it's comforting to know she's found Europe. Yes, sir. This reflects on me. 
I made an appointment for her to receive the Prime Minister at 12. Now it's after 3. Well, take it easy, Maxwell. She'll get here. Gibson, you are talking to the Embassy's Charge d'Affaires. Don't you think it'd be more curious to address me as Mr. Maxwell or Sir? Why, certainly, if it seems important, uh, Sir. But I think you're going to find that Mrs. Adams prefers informality in the office. Yes, sir. Mrs. Adams' preferences interest me very little. I fully intend to go on running the embassy while she remains quietly in the background. Like to make a little bet? Mr. Maxwell? Uh, sir? Mr. Maxwell, about the presentation at the palace tonight, what should we inform the Grand Duke? Let's not bother the Grand Duke. His Highness has troubles of his own. Gentlemen, I see no necessity for all this talk, talk, talk. We are agreed that the marriage is desirable for both countries. We are agreed on the terms. Oh, please, oh, Sophie. So I do not see how Parliament could have made it any clearer. When my niece marries Prince Hugo, here, I read it again. The dowry of the Princess Royal upon her marriage will be two million crumpets, and her income will be tripled. Well, Excellency, does that not answer all your questions? All but one, Mr. Prime Minister. The, uh... Well, what, what, what? Where is Lichtenberg going to get the money? If I may be so blunt, your treasure is no better off than our own in Middeldorf. The answer, Excellency, is simple statesmanship. We will get an American loan. The Minister of Finance means he will ask for an American loan. It amounts to the same thing. To be sure. Now, and mind you, I'm speaking for my government rather than Prince Hugo, who, as you know, is not interested in material things. He is simply a young man, wholesomely in love. Now, I see no reason why this match should not take place immediately, uh, after these unpleasant financial details have been worked out. Do not worry, Excellency. When the Lady Ambassador gets here, there will be no problem. We have very reliable reports that she's extremely warm-hearted, tremendously generous, and very inexperienced. <laughs> it will be... Oh. She's here. She has arrived. Type. Your Highnesses, if you will excuse us, we will be back immediately with everything arranged. Good, good. Havana. It'll do. Say, this is quite a layout. Yes, it was built by the Grand Duke's uncle, Count Maximilian, for his, uh, oh, for a dancer he was crazy about. Why, the old son of a gun. <laughs> And uh, this is your office here, Mrs. Adams. Oh. I'll go see about the trunks. Right. Excuse me. Thank you, staff. Any problems, my door is always open. At ease. Hello. I'm Sally Adams. Who are you? The Chargé d'Affaires. Who? I am Pemberton Maxwell. I'm in charge of affairs here at the Embassy. Oh, you're one of the office help. You'll find me easy to work for. <laughs> Mrs. Adams. We might as well understand each other immediately. When I have appointments, I arrive on time. Well, bully for you. Of course, I happen to have a diplomatic background, a family tradition of government service. My father was a public servant. So was my grandfather. What do you know? My grandmother was a servant, too. She was a chambermaid at the old Waldorf. <laughs> oh, uh, call the Duke and Duchess, will you, and tell them I'll drop in around four, sort of get acquainted. Mrs. Adams, apparently I'm going to have to teach you a great many things you quite obviously do not know. You're going to teach me. Look at you. Your coat and pants don't even match. Oh, Mrs. Adams, the Prime Minister is here with the Minister of Finance. Well, ask him to come in, Ken. Mrs. Adams, in these matters of state, it would be wise to consult me. I could tell you, for example, they are desperate for an American loan. Oh, I know all about that. They told me in Washington to turn them down. Cold, but diplomatic. Come in, gentlemen. Mr. Chargé d'Affaires. Your Excellencies, it is my pleasure to present to you the representative of the United States of America, Mrs. Sally Adams. Madam, Madam Ambassador. Ambassador. And this is... This the... is the proudest and happiest moment of my life. Lichtenberg and the United States of America are both conscious 
of the historic friendship that has existed between our two countries. Grab some chairs. And if I may be permitted an extremely unofficial remark, off the record, as you say, the American ambassador is very beautiful. So beautiful. Well, thank you. A good optometrist could clean up around here. <laughs> now, if the Minister of Finance may speak officially, Mr. Tantini. Madam Ambassador, we too are conscious of the historic friendship that has existed between our two countries. When one contrasts the wealthy and prosperous nation you represent... Not a dollar. ...with the position of my poor country... Not a quarter. ...you must realize the need for a closer relationship between us. Not a dime. Of course, if you'd care to stick around for a few beers... No, no, thank you. But if you could only go back and tell the Grand Duke that we have open negotiations for an American loan. Okay, you open them. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you, that's wonderful. <laughs> and I'll close them. <laughs> Madame Ambassador is jesting. Yes, I'm sure that we can come to some kind of an agreement that will be mutually satisfactory. Can I get you 20? Drop it again, boys. Madame Ambassador. Uh -huh. The show. Well, I told them, didn't I? Yes, and with such great finesse. It strikes me that a woman with your enormous lack of experience, Mrs. Adams, call might... Call me madam. Madam. When you call me madam, smile. Madam. I happen to be chargé d'affaires. And I happen to be chargé the whole work. Ah, oh, look, fancy pants. We have to work together. We ought to be friendly. You're going to like me, and I, I know I... prefer to keep our relations official. Madam. Okay, now we understand each other. I'm the madam, and you're just one of the boys. Yes? Mr. Maxwell, the foreign minister is here. He wishes to see you immediately. Me? I beg your pardon. I had expected to find you alone. Uh, may I address myself only to you? Certainly, General, certainly. I would not think of calling on the American ambassador without an appointment. But perhaps you would inform Her Excellency that with all Lichtenburg, I rejoice in her arrival. She will be so informed, General. And would you be good enough to add that at Her Excellency's convenience, the Foreign Minister will be happy to make an appointment to receive her credential. Uh, forgive the intrusion. Uh, what's your hurry, General? May, uh, may I introduce myself? I Pardon am me, madam. Your Excellency, it is my pleasure to present to you the representative of the United States of America, Madam Ambassador, Mrs. Sally Adams, General Cosmo Constantine, Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs for the Grand Duchy of Lichtenberg. Excellency. Get lost, get lost. Here are my references. This is the proudest and happiest moment of my life. Lichtenberg and the United States of America are both conscious of the historic friendship that has existed between our two countries. I shall seriously endeavor to preserve that warm relationship and I shall strive with all my heart and strength to bring about a closer unity between us. How much do you want? I, I do not understand. How much money? Money? Cabbage, lettuce, you know, that green stuff. Money, 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 money. Can you use any money today? Money, 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 money. Nice new bills that we're giving away. There are photographs Every one, Lincoln, Grant, and Washington, or you might like the ones with Henry Clay. Can you use any money today? Two million, four million, six million, eight million, ten. Take what you want, when it's gone, you can come back again. Bills that haven't been printed yet, you can have them by the sack. Coins that haven't been minted yet, that you never have to give back. Money, 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 Uncle Sam puts it right on the line. And if we ever run out of checks for him to sign, you can have mine, all of mine. You can have mine. Home in the States. 
place underground is a cave full of gold. Back up a truck and we'll fill it with all it can hold. Take ten million and please don't fuss if you find it can't be spent. You can lend it right back to us and we'll pay you seven percent. Money, 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 Uncle Sam puts it right on the line. And if that fellow with whiskers ever should decline, you can have mine, all of mine. You can have Name your own figure. Could you use 50 million? How about 100 million? Madam Ambassador, I am convinced that the people of Lichtenburg can and should help themselves without foreign aid. I would oppose an American loan. You're kidding. No, Excellency. Well, seems to me that's not a very friendly attitude. Borrowing money is not always difficult, but uh, paying it back. Paying it back? <laughs> that is naive. <laughs> Uh, of course, all I can do is make a recommendation. But, uh, sit down, General. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, lovely room. Yes. I understand it was built by the Grand Duke's uncle for his, uh, cutie pie. Yes, that was quite a scandal. Uh, I believe it is in this room that the uh, door to the secret passageway is located. Oh? It's somewhere along here. Here it is. It leads to the palace through the royal wine cellar. Very interesting. Sort of gives the old room a romantic feeling. <laughs> Don't you kind of sense it, Excellency? <laughs> Uh, forgive my digression, but uh, I would like to clarify my views on foreign policy if the American ambassador is interested. If she isn't, she ought to have her head examined. Uh -huh. um, I was just thinking that the American ambassador might understand the foreign minister's views a little better if she knew something about him. Unquestionably. What is it that Madam Ambassador would like to know? Uh, is the foreign minister married? No, Excellency. Any other questions? Just one. Does the foreign minister like roast turkey? We're having it for dinner tonight. Tonight? With candy jams and cranberry sauce. <laughs> the foreign minister has a passion for roast turkey, with uh, what you said. But isn't it tonight that Her Excellency is going to the palace? The palace? Who's playing there? <laughs> no, uh, tonight, uh, Madame Ambassador and her staff will be presented at court. Their Highnesses are giving a ball. Oh, yeah? Oh. Swell, well, I must jot that down. Now, let me see. Tonight, presentation at Palace. 8.30, Excellency. Tomorrow night, turkey dinner. 7.30, Excellency. I, I'm very sorry. I wish I were free tomorrow night. Friday night? No, I... Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Tuesday would be perfect. Fine. Then we can talk more about the loan. Seriously. <laughs> you are the most American American I've ever met. That's the nicest thing anybody ever told me. You couldn't have said anything that the most American of... Because I know there's a knock in there, too. Um, please uh, translate into English this word, knock. You know, you think I'm all right, except... Okay, I can take it. What are the exceptions? Well, forgive me, but perhaps with Americans, money is a little too important. There are more valuable things than money. That's what money's for, to buy them with. Oh, with money you cannot buy... Uh, what can't you buy? Oh, many things for one. Love, a happy marriage. Well, I thought that marrying for money was sort of an old custom around here. Oh, yes, and in my own family for generations. But to me, a marriage for money, something never to do. I learned that lesson when a child. You were married when you were a child? <sighs> no, I learned it from my parents, my grandparents, my uncles, my great-uncles, my cousins. Ten generations of Constantines lived very comfortable lives. They were contented to live in style, supported by their wives. Daughters of men who were wealthy treated them like a glove. They all married for money. I mean to marry for love. It's an old time.
schon bei dir, Marine for love. And that old fashioned idea, what I'm thinking of. Where there's love, poets have said, who can be best one? That's an old fashioned idea. But it's being done. If she must have gold, let it be in her hair. Rubies, let them be in her lips. Diamonds, let them shine in her eyes. Just an old-fashioned romance. With the moon above, a romance, one that will end, marrying for love. That's the kind of love that I'm thinking of. That's the kind of love that I'm thinking. Mrs. Adams, about the presentation tonight. I... Anything wrong? I just met General Constantine. And? Wow. Maxwell said this thing is strictly formal. Now, I've got everything but a high hat. Ken. I guess I'd better get one. Oh, pardon me. What were you going to say? Wow. Here we are. The Grand Duke Otto. He has one just like it. Is that so? Oh, perfect. Fits like a glove. I kind of wanted it to fit like a hat. Only 300 crumbs. 300. Bigger hat, smaller price, if you don't mind. 200 crumbs. 20 dollars. Ah, this is it. It's fine. I'll take it. I will get a box. Just a few seconds. Thank Song? Well, yes, it's a hit from a show that ran a couple of years on Broadway. Could I hear the words, please? Don't see why not. It's a lovely day today, so whatever you've got to do, you've got a lovely day to do it in, that's true. And I hope whatever you've got to do is something that can be done by two. For I'd really like to stay. It's a lovely day today. And whatever you've got to do, I'd be so happy to be doing it with you. But if you've got something that must be done, and it can only be done by one, there is nothing more to say. Except it's a lovely day for saying it's a lovely day. And it's very danceable, too. Oh, yes, thank you. I shall want that. Uh, 
anything else new from America? Mm -hmm. Me? You see, I, uh, I really don't work here. Oh. Your Highness. Oh. Well, I am still looking. Thank you. I will call. Your Highness. <clears throat> well, I, I guess that makes us about even, Your Highness. I, I, I mistook you for somebody professional, uh, an actress or a dancer. Yes, that is very odd, because I've always wanted to be a, an actress or a dancer. Oh, really? I'm afraid it is very improper for me to... Oh, forgive me. I'm Kenneth Gibson of the American Embassy, Your Highness. I'm terribly sorry. This may sound pompous, but until we are formally presented... Oh, I, I understand perfectly. But the first thing you learn in the State Department job is protocol. Well, we shouldn't even be talking at all. We are not anymore, are we? Oh, no. Uh, the, the thing that threw me... Uh, well, I had no idea that the Princess Royal would be traveling about alone. Oh, I am not alone. My equerry. They would uh, like to stay closer to me. I can understand that. But I enjoyed the feeling of privacy. Well, people, don't they all know you? Oh, yes, but they are considerate and kind. They pretend they do not notice me. Well, I think I could do almost anything. Dance, sing, stand on my head even. And no one would look at me. <laughs> That's hard to believe. to be doing it with you but if you've got something that must be done and it can only be done by one there is nothing more to say except it's a lovely day for saying it's a lovely day well that's very nice very nice your highness <laughs> And you were right. Nobody seemed to be watching it. It is a good thing Uncle Otto was not. Oh, forgive me. I have many things to do. Well, if you've something that must be done, now don't forget two heads are better than just one. And besides, I'm certain if you knew me, you'd find I'm very good company. Won't you kindly let me stay? If you've got something that must be done And it can only be done by one There is nothing more to say Except it's a lovely day for saying It's a lovely day It's a lovely day It's a lovely day dowries, income. It would be wonderful if we could run away like simple peasants and marry tomorrow. No? I cannot pretend I am dying of impatience, Your Highness. We scarcely know each other. My mother did not meet my father until three days before their wedding. Have they been happy? Well, uh, Your Highness should not listen to backstairs gossip. Besides, things would have been entirely different if our country were not so poor. Which reminds me, I understand the American ambassador will be here tonight. Yes, uh, with her staff. Your Excellency, your Highness has been received within a very few moments. I'll wait.
Are you sure you know what to do, madam? I curtsy at the door. Bending the left knee, keeping the back straight, the head up, with under no circumstances a wobble. Okay, no wobble. I step inside and curtsy again. Why, I'll never know. I walk to the throne and curtsy again, for Pete's sake. Then I hand the Grand Duke my recommendations. Your credentials. Okay, I hand them to him. Then I tell him how glad I am to be here, and he tells me how glad he is I am here. I make out I believe it. Then maybe he says sit down. In that case, I tell him a couple of jokes. Please. And, uh, I'll keep it clean. When he gets up, I get up. I curtsy again. No wobble. And just to make sure I haven't got a chance, they make me wear this. I don't mind a train, but they shouldn't have given me the super cheats. Good evening. General. I'm very sorry, but the delay is unavoidable. His Highness has been resting. A slight indisposition. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, we uh, could make it some other time. Your Royal Highnesses, the Grand Duke and Grand Duchess of Lichtenburg. <laughs> now, now, no need to be nervous. You go ahead, Cosmo. I'll be fine. You just be yourself, and their highnesses will find you enchanting. Curtsy in here, in there. Then I walk to the throne. The ambassador and her staff will now be received. Okay, boys, here we go. Where are my credentials? I have them here, madam. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Adams. Yes? Uh, don't you want to get the train back on the track? Oh. I do want Harry to be proud of me. Her Excellency, the Ambassador from the United States of America. must have wobbled. <laughs> My credentials, Your Highness. And I want to tell you how happy I am to be in this grand duchy of Lichtenberg. I think one reason is it just so happens that one of my ancestors was Dutch. So you can understand how happy I am to be in this grand duchy and to meet all you grand Dutchmen. Dutch, Dutch, you think we are Dutch? We are Lichtenburgers, Madame Ambassador. Yes, of course. <laughs> Extremely amusing, Madame Ambassador. So amusing. <laughs> <laughs> you are excellent. Oh, why don't you sit down, Highness? I understand you've been a little under the weather lately. Well, these are very trying times for small nations. But I imagine the wise ambassador from a much more fortunate country knows what would make me feel a great deal better. Am I right, Excellency? Could be. Tomorrow, I'll send you a bowl of nice, thick chicken soup. It's my grandmother's recipe. And do you know that she never once called a doctor in 40 years? Of course, she did owe her money. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if it's all right with you, Your Highness, there's a member of my staff who hasn't been presented yet. He's a nice kid, Mr. Kenneth Gibson. Your Highnesses? Your Highness?
The interview was over, madam. Oh. Well, it's sure nice to have met your highnesses. Uh, is it proper for me to, uh... Oh, no, no. Um, I must ask you. Oh. Enjoying your stay in Lichtenburg, Mr. Gibson. I'm not, Your Highness. No? Well, you see, it's extremely personal. I'm afraid, not protocol. You may tell me. Well, I'd never believe this back home, not in a thousand years. What? Well, I met a girl and I can't get her out of my mind. Is that so unpleasant? Ordinarily, no, but. Uh, well, this is like a fairy tale without much chance for a happy ending. You see, the girl turned out to be a real honest-to-goodness princess. You dance very well, Mr. Gibson. I'll shut up, Your Highness. Cosmo, I'm getting very fond of Lichtenberg. <laughs> well, you couldn't have arrived at a better time. Our annual fair opens next week. Yeah? I hear that's quite a shindig. Oh, yes. Yeah, very colorful. Much to see. The Princess Royal leads our dance festival. You will enjoy it, Excellency. What is it? I have said something? Oh, this Excellency business. Isn't it about time the foreign minister started getting less foreign? <laughs> you say such amusing things, I wish I could understand them. I shall have to spend some evenings with an English-American dictionary. You name the evenings and I'll be over. May Your Excellency. Uh, of course, Your Highness. I have not danced in years, but in honor of the American ambassador. Oh, you're doing fine. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, now you're really grooving. Yeah? yeah one, two, three. One, two, three. Fine. Tell me, just how does this reception differ from your famous Washington parties? Well, we have a good time. Uh, I mean, uh, well, less formal. You know, everybody sort of pitches in and... Look, uh, why don't I just show your highness? Why, yes, please do, Excellency. You got anything hot, Maestro? Hot? Yeah, you know, sizzling. Oh, yes, I know what you mean. Uh, something up to date? We have it. Let's see. Uh, here it is. An American song, Irving Berlin, The International Rag. Hmm, 1913. Well, that's fairly up to date. Let's give it a whirl. Real razzmatazz, Highness. Razzmatazz. <laughs> Excuse me. What? 
Perfectly right. We, we. Oh, that, that was impertinent. I know. No, 
No, it was not. It... Good night. You have brought a new vitality to Lichtenburg. The old vitality suits me fine. General, forgive me, Excellency. At your convenience, could His Highness see you? Of course. Go ahead. Maxwell's right here. As you say in America, okay. Oh, you are going to permit me to take you home? Sure. Where do you live? Pleasure to watch them work. Work? When those old world diplomats are good, they're magnificent. So beautifully sly and devious. Surely, madam, you don't suppose the foreign minister's attentions are purely personal? You mean you don't think he likes me? Well, to be perfectly candid, I doubt that the question has even entered his mind. With these fellows, there are only two kinds of people those who can serve their purpose and those who can't. You, madam, as the ambassador of a rich country. If you're referring to the loan, let me tell you something. Oh, I'm quite sure I can tell you the same thing. He said he didn't want a loan, that he would oppose accepting a loan. Yes, he did. The hard-to-get method. They don't miss a trick. <laughs> you don't suppose they're discussing the weather? Uh, Mrs. Adams, if you don't mind... Ken, I... I think we'd better go. I'd like to. Yes? You wanted to see me, Mrs. Adams? Yeah, I'd like to hand the president a few laughs. Will you dream up a funny cablegram for me? You know, about the presentation. Tell him about my fall. I, I will, Mrs. Adams. I'll out in a minute. Yes, ma'am. It's a lovely day today. And whatever you've got to do. You've got a lovely day to do it in. me to go to the fair with him. Remind me to cancel, will you? Is this the cable to the president? Dearest Maria. Well, that should hand him a laugh. Look, kid, these things happen to all of us. Nothing could be as bad as... Ken, what's happened to you? I hear singing and there's no one there I smell blossoms and the trees are bare All day long I seem to walk on air I wonder why I wonder why I keep tossing in my sleep at night And what's more, I've lost my appetite 
Stars that used to twinkle in the skies Are twinkling in my eyes I wonder why You don't need analyzing It is not so surprising That you feel very strange but nice Your heart goes pitter-patter I know just what's the matter Because I've been there once or twice Put your head on my shoulder You need someone who's older A rub down with a velvet glove There is nothing you can take To relieve that pleasant ache You're not sick, you're just in love You don't need analyzing no It is not so surprising That you I feel very strange, but nice. Your heart goes in a pattern. I know just what's the matter. Because I've been there I once or twice. Put your head on my shoulder. Need someone who's older. I love dogs more than I love them. There is nothing you can take to relieve that pleasant ache. Come on now, snap out of it. I hear singing. But you just said that. I know, but I hear singing and there's no one there. It is not so surprising that you feel very strange, but nice. I go hit a patter. I know just what's the matter because I. Put your head on my shoulder. Need someone who's older. I rub down with a bell's name. There is nothing you can take to relieve that pleasant ache. You're not sick, you're just in love.
Is late. I don't know. What do we gain by waiting for her? This, Mr. Sebastian, is a job for a man who understands women. Oh, here. Let me talk to her alone. You'll see. Madam Ambassador. Your Excellencies. Hi. May I say your presence adds so much to the beauty of our fair? So much. Thank you. And now if Madam will enter the official car. We thought it might be more fun walking. Oh, no. This is an honor you cannot deny us. OK. See you boys later. To the royal box. What about your sidekick? Doesn't he go along? Well, you see, we have a saying in Lichtenberg. Alone at the fair with a lady fair. No greater delight anywhere. That's so. Madam Ambassador, you're a diplomat from a great country. But to me, you're also a woman. Very interesting point of view. When I'm with a lovely lady, I forget all problems of state. I forget budgets. I forget foreign loans. Did you ever try a memory course? You know, it is spring, Madam Ambassador. I know. We've got a calendar at the embassy. Cut it out, Excellency. Forgive me, I'm trying to control my ardent nature, but Madam is so... I said cut it out, Mr. Tantinen. I don't want you to call me August. Well, that'll be soon enough. I'll get out here, driver. Your Excellency. Now, look at here, Buster. I thought this was the foreign minister's racket. And if he hasn't got a chance, nobody has. Thanks for the ride, August. Mrs. Adams. Cosmo. Uh, Your Excellency. Are you alone? Yes. Tantinen was taken out in the first inning. He was plenty fast, but a little wild. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, it's nothing important. Well, it's nice seeing you. Uh, you are not going to walk unescorted. I thought it might be safer. I'm uh, meeting people. You know, I was very sorry you were unable to come with me, Sally. Why? Well, we have a saying in Lichtenburg. Alone at the fair with a lady fair. Oh, I know all about that. It means I may be the ambassador, but I'm also a woman. <laughs> a woman of very refreshing charm. From a country with very refreshing money. What made you say that? A hundred million reasons. Quite a fiesta you're tossing here. Here, yeah, such a pity. This might be our last fair for a very long time. Unless you can raise more money? The problem will be solved if my program works out. I bet. This program of yours, it's a little like Tantinin's, isn't it? Hardly. Pantinin is an impatient schoolboy, interested only in immediate results. Our methods could not be more dissimilar. I can see that. I don't know why it is. I always seem to fall for heels. This I do not understand. I find it pretty puzzling myself. Well, let's stick to the subject of money. Tell me. Sally, I am going to ask a great favor of you. That figures. Let's hear it. Stop talking about money. You're a very clever man, Cosmo. Now, won't you let me get you something to read? Look, if you weren't the foreign minister, I mean just some guy that I'd met, I'd say yes. But as it is, yes. Oh, your highness. 
Uh, Amos, hi, Mr. Mr. Gibson is with the American Embassy. Thousand pardons, sir. It's all right. I enjoyed the trip. Oh, uh, I'm very sorry. My equerries are overly conscientious. Oh, but they're very considerate. They didn't break either arm. Hmm. Well, uh, goodbye, Mr. Gibson. Goodbye. We have got to be sensible. It is not permitted for me to talk to a young man in public. I'm willing to make it private. Yes, but it is not possible. You see, even if I do not marry Prince Hugo, I... Are you going to? Those decisions are not left to me. I am not a private citizen. Oh, I know. You're going to inherit a throne. Look, Maria, I don't think I've slept three solid hours since we met. I, too, have not slept very well. Oh, uh, I believe you have met Mr. Gibson, Your Highness. Oh, yes. You seem to have been discussing something very fascinating. No, just insomnia. We both have it. I wondered what you two have in common. Good day, Mr. Gibson. Oh, I, I'm in no hurry, Your Highness. I'm... I'm oh, oh, yes, yes, I, I guess I am. Uh, well, goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. American. I do not think I care for your attitude toward the Prince's Royal. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Highness. It's hard to please everybody. Uh, Gibson, I'm a man with a rather violent temper. That's a pity. Bad temper can get you in trouble. Perhaps, but more likely it can get you in trouble. I'm going to give you some very sound advice. Leave Lichtenburg. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure your advice isn't worse than your temper. Oh, Hugo. I think we had better get back to the box. Uncle Otto will be wandering. I've just indicated to Mr. Gibson that his attentions to you are far from discreet. I think he is right, Mr. Gibson. In that case, he is. you again. But young man, that is Schlibbertsberger. If you're not used to that... I'm getting used to it now. Also, it is much past midnight and we would like to close. That's very sensible of you. Very sensible. Just as soon as I finish... this. Sure. Man's got to be sensible. Like falling in love with the princess. <laughs> love. Love is beautiful. Love is swell. Love is as sweet as a nut. Love is grander than tongue can tell. Love is remarkable, but... Look at what it did to Anthony. It made a fool out of Anthony. If love could do that to Anthony, what chance have I with love? Look at what it did to Romeo. It dealt poor Romeo an awful blow. If love could do that to Romeo, what chance have I with love? Look what it did to Samson till he lost his hair. He was brave. If a haircut could weaken Samson, they could murder me with a shave. Look at what it did to Bonaparte. He lost his head when he lost his heart. If he kicked over the apple cart, what chance of I, an ordinary guy, what chance of I with love? Look what it did to Adam. From that bite, he couldn't escape. If an apple could finish Adam, they could knock me off with a grape. 
well, the plug could do that to old Adam and Tony and Sam and the boys named above. Then what chance have I, an ordinary guy, what chance have I with love? Please, young man, go home. I know you are sad, but sad. What's there to be sad about? I'm a happy boy. <laughs> Mr. Gibson in right away. Mrs. Adams. I am in. I, uh... <clears throat> I thought you'd want to see me. I do. I've got a report here intended for Washington. It's about you. Maxwell, huh? And it's a Lulu, especially this part. After being released by the police because of diplomatic immunity, Gibson fell asleep in a gutter. On being awakened, he publicly bellowed an announcement of his engagement to the Princess Maria. Well? well I, I, I don't think it was a gutter, Mrs. Adams. Otherwise, I guess the report is pretty accurate. Look, with the possible exception of myself, nobody in this office is expected to act like a knucklehead. How long do you think you'll last here if this goes to Washington? About as long as I deserve. Headache? Oh, pip. And the uh, royal family isn't helping it any. Look, Mrs. Adams, I, I just as soon go home. Well, on your way, stop by my bathroom. You'll find some aspirin there. Thanks. And, uh, Kenneth, save this for the waste paper drive. Never mind, I'll do it myself. Thank you, Mrs. Adams. Madam, the foreign minister's office called to confirm his engagement Tuesday night for, um... Your turkey dinner. Relax, relax. It's business. Oh, naturally. The diplomatic pouch is ready to go. Have you signed my report on young Gibson? Oh, yes, your report. I think it's in here. Madam, you certainly aren't going to treat this lightly. Why, Gibson's actually been trying to date the princess. The Grand Duke is highly exercised. What about? 
out. After all, they let Princess Margaret go out with Danny Kaye. Permit me to warn you, if there's any interference with this royal marriage, Sebastian will protest to Washington. Sebastian. Look, Fancy Pants, have you ever been in love? Madam, if you'll read the Book of Foreign Service Regulations, I don't think you'll find the word love listed as a justification for disorderly conduct. I've read the Book of Regulations, and it says, for one thing, that I'm supposed to take a complete inventory of everything in the embassy. I did, and you're shy four dish towels, an egg beater, and nine bed sheets. Is Madam under the impression that I am the housekeeper here? No comment. Anything else? Yes. Slither back to your desk and write, I won't be a tattletale 500 times. Yes? On the phone? Well, I should say so. Put her on. Hello? Hiya, honey. Uh, your Highness. I've been wanting to talk to you. Yes? Certainly, Princess. I understand. Yes. Oh, I think that's a fine idea. I'll be glad to tell him. Not at all, Princess. Bye. Ken. Hmm? I want you to do something for me. Sure. You know about this underground tunnel thing to the palace. Yeah. Well, they're sending someone over with a message. I want you to go down and get it for me. A message? It's very confidential. Oh. It's dark in here. Here, take this. Got a match? No, got a lighter. I still can't see. Then take off your glasses. Mrs. Adams said I... I know. I told her I had to see you. She was very sweet. Oh, I'm not complaining. Kenneth, uh, Prince Hugo has been making very bad threats about what he would do to you if we met again. Well, that's very good news. I didn't think there was a chance we'd meet again. But you weren't really worried. Well, not too much. I, I think mostly it was an excuse for seeing you. Darling. <laughs> oh. oh. There. Now I can see you better. Maria, you can't marry that guy. I am not going to. There is no money for the dowry. And I understand there definitely will be no American loan. Yeah, but, but what if there is? Is it not silly to bother about things that will not happen? I would like you to kiss me. Look, Maria. Uh -huh. That was a command. Well, I guess there's nothing else to do but obey. Oh, Kenneth. Oh, I like being in your arms. I remember at the presentation, oh, I was so afraid you would not ask me to dance. That's something you never have to be afraid of. Not when there's something to dance about. Someone to dance it with. Something to dance it to. To a fox rock or a wall. Put on your dancing shoes. Dance to the happy news. Let's dance away the blues. To a fox rock or a wall. You want someone to party. And your lonely heart yearns. While you're there broken hearted. Suddenly he returns. That's something to dance about. With someone to dance it with. To something to dance it to. To a fox rock or a waltz. To a Charleston or a waltz. To a tango or a waltz.
Madam, the foreign minister just phoned. He's on his way over. Fine. Tell the butler we'll have cocktails up here. Yes, madam. And, uh, Maxwell, it might be a good idea if we're not left alone. I want you to sort of hang around. Well, I must say that's an astonishingly sound suggestion. It's very wise to have a witness present at high-level discussions. Yeah. And uh, just to be polite, I'll probably hint that you get out. But no matter what I say, just pretend that you don't understand. I confess I misjudged you, madam. This is what I call real diplomacy. Oh, and uh, before you come in, you might give him a couple of minutes to say hello. I understand perfectly. And uh, Maxwell, how do I look? I never thought I'd say so, madam, but... Hello? Oh, yes, put it through. Hello? Hello, Harry, how are you? How's Beth? Good. And Margaret? You mean to tell me they've got critics in Galesburg, Illinois? Hmm. Oh, not bad, Harry, but they're trying to slip a fast one over on me. Yeah, the man I told you about, the foreign minister. Is he a smooth character? Don't worry, Harry. I'm having him over to dinner tonight, and I'm going to tell him off, but good. I've got a speech all memorized, and it's a honey. Bye, Harry. Love to the family, and thanks for calling. Bye. Now, see here, Cosmo. We're going to put our cards on the table. If there's something you're after, why not come out and say so? The foreign minister, madam. Sorry, my dear. Hi, Cosmo. Now, see here, Cosmo, we're going to put our cards on the table. <laughs> Must we play cards? Uh, other attractive men have tried to influence me, and not one has failed. Uh, succeeded. If I may use one of your expressions, what the devil are you talking about? Oh, I know what's on your mind. Why not be straightforward and direct about it? Well, of course. What I mean is, if there's something you're after, why not come out and say so? Well, you know, that was probably the first time a foreign minister ever kissed an ambassador. We've made history. Cosmo? Yes? I, uh... Let's make more history. Uh, forgive me, Excellency. Uh, Madam, they're typing that report to Washington. It will be right up. What report? Oh, oh, thank you, Maxwell. You needn't wait. Oh, I don't mind. Not at all. Maxwell. Yes, madam? The situation has changed. Really changed. Don't you understand? Blow. Uh, Mrs. Adams like service. <laughs> Maxwell. Those instructions I gave you... They'll be carried out, madam. You may be sure of that. Oh, have you heard the very amusing story they're telling at the Huffbrow? We heard it. Yes, very amusing. Look, Maxwell, the General and I are going to have a cocktail before dinner. Oh, you must permit me to mix them for you. But I don't want you... I insist. Now, what'll it be? Murder, I think. That's a drink I'm afraid I don't know. A little brandy, a dash of scram, some et gay, out gay, ique, and an egg. Then you beat it. Beat it! Well, there doesn't seem to be an egg. Then get one, you lunkhead! Poor Maxwell. It's just nerves. He needs a vacation. <laughs> uh, Cosmo. I realize that whatever you're doing is for your country. Nobody can be blamed for that. Well, if through my job, I can help you. Darling, your generosity is charming. You are charming. But in diplomacy, an impersonal attitude is the best thing. Best thing for who? Uh, whom? <laughs> for you, me, everyone. But who cares about everyone? I'm only interested in you. Please let 
me say from the start I don't pretend to be smart I just suggest what I think best having your interest at heart I only want what's the best thing for you and the best thing for you would be me I've been convinced after thinking it through that the best thing for you would be me every day to myself I say the way what will it be I ask myself what's the best thing for you and myself and I seem to agree that the best thing for you would be Sally, my dear, you never fail to amaze me. You reveal now a quality I never suspected. I have a quality? <laughs> this touching unselfishness, thinking only of me. But we must also think of you. I ask myself, what's the best thing for you? And myself and I seem to agree. That the best thing for you yes. would be me. Oh, you have to wear one with points on it? <laughs> <laughs> Madam Ambassador, please. Oh. Your call, madam. It is ready. Hello? Harry? Sally? Well, he just left and... Oh, yes. Very satisfactory. Um, Harry, um, do you think we can spare a hundred million dollars? From Washington. D.C. Delighted to see you, Senators. Welcome. Well, how are you, sir? I'm Pemberton Maxwell, senior officer at the embassy. Glad to know you, sir. Where's Sally? Well, you know, Mrs. Adams, she's at the caterers, very busy, preparing for tonight's party. Oh, a party, huh? For us? For anybody. Mrs. Adams' parties require no explanation. Uh, great gal, Sally. Enjoy. Yes, indeed. Uh, yes. Uh, come in, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen. Come, we get our hats. But the party does not start for five, six hours. So we come a little early. This is Mrs. Adams' office. Oh, yeah. Make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen. The guest rooms aren't quite ready. Not the most efficient staff in the world. No hurry. I uh, understand you gentlemen are here as an investigating committee. Yep, that's the general idea. Thank you. Well, I'm prepared to talk. What about? The, the ambassador and what passes for her management of the embassy. Are you knocking, Sally? Oh, I, I'm afraid you misunderstood. I, I admire her enormously. Yes, splendid woman, very able, but... Uh, you are here to investigate. Yeah, alone to Lichtenberg. Welcome to Lichtenberg. Uh, may I present the Prime Minister of Lichtenberg, Mr. Sebastian, and the Minister of Finance, Mr. Tantinen, Senators Gallagher, Brockway, and Wilkins. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll uh, see about your rooms. Excellencies, I know that you Americans do not like to waste time. But we will not rush. We will sit down before we discuss the loan. But uh, what about what's-his-name, Mrs. Adams' friend? Our plan was to talk to him. Oh, yes, Cosmo, the foreign minister. 
is the opposition leader. He's a very difficult man. Also, Excellencies, the negotiating of loans, that is the business of the Prime Minister, exclusively. Well, it's too bad. Our ambassador thinks very highly of this cause, Mo. She seems to want us to deal with him. She does? Question Mo? Will you excuse us, please? We'll get right back. Pardon me. Mrs. Adams. Oh, Ken, I left the senators at the bar. Kind of see that they have fun, will you? The loan, it's going through, huh? Got my fingers crossed. What do you suppose happened to him? Cosmo, what are you doing in here? Fascinating book, your State Department's Foreign Service Regulation. Yeah, it's a book I always curl up with at parties. I was particularly interested in this chapter on American consuls and ambassadors who marry citizens of foreign countries. Uh, got any particular consul or ambassador in mind? Darling, there is something I have wanted to say. Mr. Sebastian, madam, and the members of the cabinet. Just don't forget what you were going to say. Come in, boys. Excellent. Glad you could make it. Excellent. Cosmo, the government has fallen. No. Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Prime Minister. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very good luck. Is this true, Sebastian? The cabinet felt that only you could solve the problems of Lichtenberg. We are very happy for you. Very happy. Excuse me, please. It's wonderful news, Cosmo. Thank you, Sally. And gentlemen, I have only one question. Will I be given an absolutely free hand? Mr. Prime Minister, is a party the place to discuss politics? Where is Tantinin? Probably at the bar. The cabinet meeting was very exhausting. If you will excuse us. It's out in the garden. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, this gives me a chance to carry out my program. And I wish I knew what they are up to. Don't you worry, Cosmo. If the deal I've been working on goes through, you can even run for Grand Duke. <laughs> Madam Ambassador, ah, Mr. Prime Minister, congratulations. My heart is so happy. Thank you, Tantini. I would have come in immediately, but I've been talking to the American senators. They will see you now. Now? Now. Uh, what about? They are waiting in the Excellency's office. They're on your side, Cosmo. Go in and level with them. <laughs> I don't understand what the big hurry is. Sooner the better. I can't wait to get at those hot dogs. Sally having hot dogs? And beef. <laughs> Look, boys, we've got to watch ourselves. This Cosmo strikes me as a very smooth customer. Oh, come in, Mr. Prime Minister. Sit down, won't you? Uh, thank you. Now, uh, we're very fond of Sally, uh, Mrs. Adams. <laughs> Everyone is. And she likes you. But you've got to realize this is government business. How about uh, $50 million? I do not think I understand. Pretty cagey. Uh, could you understand a loan of 70 million? Oh, no. I made my position clear. I thought you knew. It. Okay, we're here to approve a loan, but this is final. 100 million. Gentlemen, I must gratefully but emphatically decline. I, I request no loan. I accept no loan. You mean to tell us this country couldn't use 100 million dollars? Oh, we could use it, but... Well, gentlemen, I will be frank to the point of indiscretion. I appreciate your generosity in wanting to help Lichtenburg. But if my country is on the verge of bankruptcy, it is because very drastic reforms are needed. Now, with outside help, these reforms would be impossible. You must not lend my country one penny. Well, how's he doing? Sally, the Prime Minister has made a profound impression on us. Good. Boys. What did you tell them, Mr. Prime Minister? The truth, Mr. Sebastian. Swell, it's going to work out fine. Don't you think so, Jim? Right. Yeah, I'll tell them. Gentlemen, we have been in many European countries. We have talked to the heads of many governments. They have been all too eager to reach down into Uncle Sam's pockets. <laughs> Today, for the first time, we have met a statesman. We have finally met a man who has said, don't give us any money. No. Huh? We have tremendous admiration for your prime minister. And we have only one way of showing our gratitude. We're going to lend Lichtenberg 
200 million dollars. Uh, on behalf of the cabinet, we happily accept. And we vote the prime minister our lasting gratitude for his very successful negotiations. Gentlemen, I cannot say that I have enjoyed my 10 minutes as prime minister. Of course, I resign and I request that parliament be called into session as soon as possible. Good night. Resign? Why? I don't understand. My hat, please. Cosmo. Cosmo, I'm sorry, but... I do not understand how you could do this to me. Things I have fought for all my life, you have in one day destroyed. Cosmo, if you really didn't want the loan... Oh, I know you said you didn't. All right, I didn't believe you. I... Thank you. I thought it was, well, old-fashioned diplomacy. Anyway, I wanted to help you. Helping people in my country is what got me where I am. Yes. It got you out of your country into my country. Good night. Cosmo, have a heart. I love your country. I love you. I was trying to help both of you. What's so wrong with that? Wrong with it? Justice, Mrs. Adams. So long as I have any voice in the matter, Lichtenburg is not for sale. It doesn't have to be. I just heard the loan is going through. Oh. Maria, this isn't the 17th century. That marriage contract... Let me gain my word, Kennedy. If I am to inherit the throne... Well, I... suppose you don't. Maria, you're beautiful, you're charming, and I adore you. But do you honestly think you have any special talent for ruling a country? The fact that you do not consider me bright... No, I, I didn't say that. I... No, I'm, I'm the one who isn't bright. I mean, you even suggest that you give up a throne. I earning my salary, it's crazy. Your salary? I wish that were the problem. I wish it weren't. Back home, my apartment's a lot different from the palace. Two rooms. It's not very big, and the maid only comes in once a week. You make it sound very attractive. Oh, sweetheart. Of course, sir. The maid could come in twice a week. Even once would be an intrusion. What do you say? I love you. And goodbye. Huh? What? I hear singing and there's no one there. I smell blossoms and the trees are there. All day long I seem to walk on air. I wonder why, I wonder why. 
You don't need analyzing. It is not so surprising that you feel very strange but nice. Your heart goes pitter-patter. I know just what's the matter because I've been there once or twice. Put your I head on my shoulder. My you need someone who's older. A rub down with a velvet glove. There's nothing you can take to relieve that pleasant ache. You're not my sick, you're just I wonder why. You know what happened, Ken? She's gonna marry that guy. Me and my big mouth. There's nothing I can do about it. Yes? This is Mrs. Adams. Hello? Hello, Harry. Oh, not so good. How are you? The family? Oh, Harry, that's wonderful news. I'm so glad to hear it. Margaret got a good notice. Television, huh? You must be very proud and happy. You don't sound too happy. Sebastian, what's his complaint? Look, Harry, you don't have to pull any punches with me. Shoot. Oh, sure, I often help them meet. They're swell kids. Yes, technically, I guess I was interfering, but... I see. I'm sorry, Harry. Does that mean I can't even stay here? Okay, we'll leave on the first boat. Goodbye, Harry. Love to the family. Home, huh? That dirty Sebastian. <laughs> the pleasure of your company at a supper and dance a coming home party that she's giving at a house tonight miss sally adams miss the sally queen adams. of washington society anybody at all who's anybody will be gathered at her house tonight miss sally adams is back among us very suddenly loaded down with secrets about what happened there across the sea yes miss of your company, you'll be proud to accept a new form. Mrs. Sally Adams, queen of all the madams, Madam X Ambassador. Sally! Oh, Sally, I'm so sorry I'm late, honey. Welcome home. Thanks, Jim. Say, what's the matter with you? Sally thinks she's in the doghouse. Why? You saved us $200 million, didn't you? You can thank Cosmo for that. He got his parliament to turn down the money. I didn't. What's the difference? He's your friend, isn't he? So you get some of the credit. Thanks, boys. You can have my share. Oh, Sal. Excuse me. I don't know why she feels that way about it. Hello, Ken. Sally, I just came from the State Department. Constantine is the new ambassador from Lichtenberg. Cosmo? He's just arrived in Washington. No! This is the best news I've had in... Why didn't he let me know? Uh, I couldn't say. Oh, come on, Ken. What is it? Well, you're going to find out anyway. Well, they told me that he sailed over with a woman. Oh. Uh, probably just a shipboard acquaintance, don't you think? He's bringing her here tonight. Well, I can understand him falling for somebody else, but why should he bring her here? Oh, well. Come on, let's have a good time. How about a drink? Sure. His Excellency, the Minister from Magrador. You go ahead, I'll be right out. All right. My gracious hostess, welcome home. Hi. His Excellency, the Ambassador from Lichtenberg. 
Hi. Sally. How are you, Cosmo? I've never been happier. So I understand. Enjoy your trip? Enormously. I have the most charming companion. How charming. She's getting off her app. She'll be right in. I suppose I should have waited, but I was so eager to see you. That was real peachy of you. The Honorable Miss Hammenschlafen. Hello, Mrs. Adams. Princess. Oh, am I glad to see you. Didn't I tell you I had a charming companion? Oh, gee, this is certainly a... But he's here, outside somewhere. Oh, Cosmo. Do you still have to wear that thing? Yes, while I perform an official and very pleasant duty. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention for a moment, please? General, glad to see you. Senator, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, pardon me. Quiet, everybody, please. Uh, Mrs. Adams, as a token of Lichtenburg's great esteem, the Grand Duke has asked me to confer upon you the order of Philip I. This order entitles you to be called a dame. A dame? Say, that's quite a promotion. <laughs> Hello. Your Highness. I use our family name now, Kenneth. It's Hammenschlafen. <laughs> oh, aren't you getting married? Next week, I expect. Oh. Th then I suppose you'll be going right back. Not if I get married here. Well, I've renounced the throne, Kenneth. We have Uncle Otto's blessing. Darling. And let me add, sir, that we are delighted by your appointment and extend to you our heartiest welcome. <laughs> thank you, Senator. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And the Grand Duke seemed to think it was a good thing for Lichtenburg. And unofficially, I think it is the best thing for me. I hear singing and there's no one there. I smell blossoms and the trees are bare. All day long I seem to walk on air. I wonder why. Something to dance it to, to a fox, not gonna chance. 